Hello and good evening and welcome, or late afternoon, early evening uh, here in Portugal. Uh, here we see the joining of Good Morning Portugal community, the Air Team community, and of course the Happy Homesteaders. Uh, taking a bit of a change in direction today um, as the Get Out and Grow community, as we um, encourage people to um, and not just think about growing their own food, but actually growing some of their own food. So uh, we're in good company doing that. We have some experienced growers here. Uh, my good friends from the Air Team, a group that's been meeting on a Monday evening for the last, oh, we're into our third year now. May I introduce to you uh, my friends, Anna and John. Um, good evening to you folks. Evening. <laughs> good to be back again. How are, How are you both? Uh, very good, looking forward to this uh, new, new venture. <clears throat> Are you uh, hungry? Seeing which way it goes, it goes and goes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, well done. Yeah, excellent. Um, and um, John had a really great idea to to maybe share with everybody the origins of the Air Team, uh, which, as I say, we're into our third year now. So when did we begin? We began in the January of 2019, didn't we? Um, uh, and we were all friends at uh, one of Britain's um, oldest charities, the Dame Hannah Rogers Trust. Um, where we worked on the Access All Aerials radio station together. And when um, when that closed and when I moved to Portugal, um, we created an online project instead, which is the Air Team. And until recently, we were working with another colleague, Rowan Ford, our, our dear mate, uh, Rowan Ford, as well. So I don't know if you want to chip in with um, some of your recollections or uh, how you see. That's just, that, that's just my reckoning of what I think the Air Team is all about. So um, if you want to do... Uh, similar, uh, John and Anna, or not? It's up to you. Uh, and, and share with with the people watching um, your what you think about the air team, what what benefits you may have got, um, whatever, whatever your reflections are on that. Um, I think just generally, like, um, I guess finding out, out new things and um, kind of, I guess, learning some new skills as well. That's was the main two things for me. I mean. And just also just having something a bit regular as well, because there was once Theo Hayne went away, it was there wasn't so much that was regular, and then there, then this came about, and it was good again. So yeah, and I think it also shows as well that um, if uh, it's possible to do do stuff like this. Um, community stuff and that without actually having to leave the home and i think maybe that's something that some people maybe um don't appreciate as well is that it had but some people think it always has to be outside of the home but of course that's not possible for everybody in the world but like i think this that's probably why things like this are good because it gives people the opportunity to maybe help out each other but without having to go out when they can't always go out sort of thing. So I, I don't know what you think, Anna, but those are mainly my thoughts on it. Thank you for that, John. Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think, I think it's a interesting uh, venture to uh, branch out uh, with, I think, because um, yes, we've been uh, doing this for, a few years and um no pun intended and um yes yeah, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> i've been i've done gardening for uh quite a few years i sort of um feel i'm sort of ready for a bit of a, a refresh because um at the moment my um well I, I i see my scheduled gardening session sort of on hold at the moment with um well lockdown or whatever it is going on at the moment so um so uh, yes, it will refresh some of my uh, skills, and um, I feel with it being one of my um, new, well, newest skills, uh, sort of around the same time as radio as well. Um, I'm, I just feel I'm sort of ready to take it to the next level, and um, so uh, yeah, it should be should be good. So looking forward to seeing which way it uh, it goes, and um, looking forward to get growing and get going. I think. Fantastic. Uh, John, sorry, John's making me laugh. May I share that publicly joke, uh, that joke, John? Is that all right? Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, I'll, and I'll go to some of the... Uh, so this is... John needs to take responsibility for this, basically. 
Do ducks or chickens make the most excellent eggs? Uh, that is a question for you, Holmes. That is very good. And I imagine that will set forth a whole load of um, egg-related puns, at which point we will have to say a nerf is a nerf, I suspect. <laughs> but I, you can guarantee there will be that sort, sort of humour um, with John and Anna involved in this show. Um, Gary's, Gary's turned up tonight as well. Fantastic, Gary. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good, good evening, guys. Just had a great day out in the garden enjoying the sunshine, the feel of the soil, and the promise of free, great food. Yum. Nice one, Gary. Um, and go, just going back to what you were saying, Anna, this is a really great sort of hybrid. You know, you, you, you did radio and you did horticulture. And basically, this brings those two together, as far as I'm concerned. The, the, I, I tend to spend more time doing radio and podcasting and that sort of stuff than I do in the garden. And I want to get that balance right. And I think you, you had a great balance on that uh, from what I remember at Hannah's. So really looking forward to that hybrid of using the technology like this, but also being out in the fresh air, which is so important, I think, at the moment. Uh, we have, uh, oh, so we've done, we've done his joke. <laughs> Hi, guys, says a Facebook user. Uh, let us know who you are because we can't see from, from our view we've currently got. And our friend Mark Rigby, uh, part of the Good Morning Portugal community, wants to learn about uh, container gardening, uh, growing in pots, I think, on a balcony and uh, in the yard close to the house. So we'll, we'll do what we can. Because I think I, I'm going to be doing that. I think Anna is as well, doing a bit of container gardening. So we will have gardeners joining us. We've got one joining us today. Uh, so you can ask questions of Lee McGrady, who I'm hoping will, will be joining us in a few minutes' time uh, on the screen. Um, he is uh, in Portugal. He's launched a gardening business. And um, he was very keen on what we were doing by the sound of it this morning. So I invited him to join us and uh, he's going to do exactly that if he can get through. Um, just thinking what to plant, says Gary. That's a really good question, Gary. Um, you know, there, I guess we're governed by the time of year, aren't we? But that's a good question for all of us here. Um, I don't know what you favour, Anna and John. Come chip in with that when you're ready. Um, don't forget. Oh, OK. Yep. Yeah, this is um, let me just cut and paste that. Um, is it difficult for you guys to paste things directly into the comments from where you are? It might be, so I'll do that on your behalf. But feel free, John and Anna, just put whatever, whatever you want in the comments. Um, and you have to give um, StreamYard permission via Facebook, I think, um, to say if you want to be anything other than a Facebook user uh, like this one. But we take that anyway. Hello, everyone. And from Belgium tonight, uh, Jenny is here. Uh, Benoit from Flanders as well, a keen gardener and somebody on the way to... Um, Portugal at some point in the future. Botard from Fiona just started planting seeds again today, hoping this time the creatures will at least let me have a share. That's a problem. And Anna, I think, has some anecdotal um, evidence of, of dealing with pests. You, you, you were a bit of an expert, weren't you, on a particular kind of pest, Anna? Um, yeah, it was, um, I, I should just add, um, if, if no one has heard of this particular plant, I shall uh, elaborate uh, if people need to. But in my time of horticulture, um, when I was up at Hannah's and horticulture started up, we worked with a particular plant called uh, Chuckleberry. Let's see if I can test my knowledge, which I think is a hybrid. That means a mixture of more than one type of uh, fruit or veg. Um, I believe it was a red current jostaberry which is also a hybrid and i had the third one in uh, gooseberry i think gooseberry i think and um so it's a, a mixture of all three of those and um uh and i got particularly well accustomed to the um the dedicated pest of uh chuckleberries which is a vine weevil which um um is well more recognized in uh, in grub form um but uh, i think it's also related or does turn into a lily beetle which is easier to spot because it's red um but the vine weevils are um yeah a little uh, little rascals because they tend to hide under the uh the soil so if you do find any plants without any roots uh, that's a bit of a pointer for you Oh, I see. What well, you just the plant will just come straight out of the ground because the vine we weevils and his pals have all been eating the roots underneath the soil. Uh, possibly, yes. I have uh, I have found quite a few. In fact, I I have been caught out uh, on a couple of occasions um, when I've I've come across something white in in soil, and then when I heard it make a bit of a thud, I realised I was getting excited about a tiny bit of grit. So uh, <laughs> so it can be very similar in colour. So uh, I should all leave right. that with you as well. So there you go, already a bit of in-house expertise there. Anything you need to know about vine weevils, ask Anna. 
Uh, both Anna and John have, have experience of working in horticultural projects. And I think we're all in this situation where we've got things to share and things to learn, because I think that's the very nature of gardening. Lee's joining us in just a moment. He's in the green room. Um, just got a, a terrible joke to share uh, from Gary. It truly is a sorry dad joke. Uh, he says, no, sorry, it's a dad joke. I beg your pardon, but it is a sorry dad joke. Why did Ben and Ben, the flowerpot men, have green feet? Because they flopped a lot. That's awful. Um, Facebook user is Owen Lloyd Martin, who very kindly, um, you put your comfrey uh, shots, I think, on, um, on, the, on the Happy Homesteaders page this afternoon. You've been out in the garden, Owen. Everyone's edging their way back out into the garden at the moment, aren't they, aren't they after the cold weather? Slowly getting back in business and wanting to be outside, I think. Um, Penny also, my purple sprouting broccoli has been decimated this year. Why is, oh, by the, by what? By pests? By weather? By what? Tell us more, Penny. This is really great stuff. People chipping in with their own experiences of their garden. I'm sure we can all help each other. I'm going to go to the units inside the Happy Homesteaders group in, in, towards the end of what we're talking about today. But we must welcome onto the screen our guest today, uh, Lee. Lee McGrady, good evening to you, Lee. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. All good. Yeah, very good. Excellent. And you are a, an actual gardener. I claim to be, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us, tell us more about your experience and your project and this new business you started up in Portugal. Oh gosh, well, uh, I straight into horticulture from school. I uh, went to Maya School uh, College, just outside of Blackpool. Uh, studied there, worked for Oldham Council for quite some time. Uh, developed my own business a few years ago back in Manchester. Uh, Met a girl, moved to Portugal, and rest, now I'm developing a new business in Portugal. Yep. Fantastic. yep. Fantastic. And I, I, most people might be thinking, wow, that's got to be better, moving from Lancashire to Portugal to do gardening. Is that right, or are there things you miss about the old place? Uh, the, the, the weather here is ridiculous. It's just it's too hot in the summer. <laughs> um, trying to work outdoors nine, ten hours in the summer, it's going to be killing, killing me. Yeah, you'd be um, wishing you were back in Lancashire with rain on your back. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you kind of get used to it. We've got webbed feet now, so. Oh, well done. It's great to uh, swim in, but no good for work. Have, have you have you done a gardening season here yet? When did when did you move out? I actually moved out two years ago, but professionally, oh. I've this is my this is my tenth month, eleventh month. Right. Uh, I've done my own garden. I've done my own veg since moving here. Uh, yeah. I've been doing. Tomatoes on the balcony. Um, got a nice little plot now for gardening out, outdoors. So, yeah. Oh, terrific. Okay. So, we can call on you, can we? We can ask you a few questions. Will you be on our or informal advisory board, Lee? Oh, I well, certainly will. Yeah. Fantastic. If I can help. Fantastic. Uh, and make sure, make sure you let everybody know about your business that you're doing, because everyone needs extra help, I think, running a business in these difficult times, or uh, certainly when you can get a bit back out and run your yeah. business. And uh, we do have well, questions. Sorry, mate, go on. I'm, I'm, I'm quite lucky that I have um, the right to travel. Being a tradesman, I'm working outdoors. I've That's had no terrific. trouble from the police. So it's not slowed me down, fortunately. Fantastic. A couple of hoes in the back and it jobs are good, at, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Northern yeah. Onslaught. Northern Onslaught. Love it. Uh, I think that's Owen talking again. He's loving the Northern Onslaught here. The <laughs> All the northerners get in. Together, northerners. <laughs> uh, just yeah, and, and the Brummie as well. There's a Brummie here tonight, but I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as a Londoner, anything north of Watford, you're all northerners. So there is a serious <laughs> northern invasion. Um, oh, uh, Anna and John uh, from Devon, of course, uh, balancing things up a little bit. Uh, beautiful part of the world, and um, a little bit uh, kinder, I think, uh, for gardeners possibly than Lancashire. So um, let's go to the question that's come in for you already, Lee. Um, I seem to have white scale insect on my two orange trees and can't seem to get rid of them. Is that the thing that shrivels up the leaves? Because I was looking at the orange trees in my garden this afternoon. Is that the very same thing, Gary, that shrivels up the, the um, it makes them all little squiggly and, 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 and um, curled up? Um, Lee, have you got any experience of citrus yet? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, I've, I've found a, a great company based here in, in, in Lisbon. Um, called Belain, and they do a great range of chemicals and herbicides, which work brilliantly with citrus. Um, okay. You do need a license. You do need a license to buy off them. Um, so if you 
if you can find a friendly gardener um <laughs> yeah that might be you all right um and for, for some people who are i mean a lot of people are really getting into organics and so on now aren't they and taking a you know a, 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 you know natural approach for, for want of a better and less lame phrase it, are there are there more sort of organic natural things to do or do you have to go in heavy-handed when you've got a pest as virulent no. as that you don't you don't have to go in heavy-handed if you can catch it early you can just yeah. get the leaves off and um prevention is better than cure yeah so keep on top of your pruning make sure there's plenty of airflow in your trees um yeah <clears throat> if, if, well, if you can prevent it it's better than trying to cure it and with so many um, things in life absolutely okay yes. so yeah Penny is yeah. one of these uh, organic folks, so she so you get in early and lots of aeration in the citrus. That's a really great tip already. Already we're off the mark. Um, I think my orange tree has white scale too. That's over in Devon. Uh, lemon and lime trees are fine at the moment. That's interesting. So I think she's uh, she's got some Italian uh, genetics there. Um, so um, I guess that's why she's growing all that citrus. Uh, probably Sicilian Sicilian citrus in Devon there. Fiona Worrell also with this same uh, white scale problem too. Um, uh, someone told me about neem oil. I'm guessing that is in con conjunction with with the citrus problem here. Have you heard of that, uh, Lee? I, I have heard of it, but I have no experience of it. I've not I've not okay. tried it, so I wouldn't want to give an opinion on it. Um, All right, fair, again, fair play. If you've got if you've got the smaller citrus trees, if you've got young citrus trees with it. Soapy water works wonderfully. Okay. If, you, if, if you've got enough, if you if you've got a tree that you can access easily, just wiping the leaves with soapy water works wonders. Give your tree a bath. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. It works really well on the um, on the rose on the roses as well this time of year. Yeah. When you get a lot of black spot on the roses, works brilliant on them as well. Fantastic. Oh, okay. Great tips. Excellent, excellent. And this, I mean, this relies on, as you say, prevention being better than cure and getting out there and, and keeping a close eye on what's going on. So that there's, there's a really good incentive to walk your garden every day, isn't it? Like, go uh, look at your plot, enjoy being out there and just have a, keep an eye on things, yeah? It's, it's, the, it's the best part of owning the garden, is walking around it and enjoying it, having a look, yeah. hope things. Yeah, it's the, be it's the best part of gardening. Tremendous. Okay. Yeah, enjoying it. You've got to remember to enjoy it, haven't you? Um, I have a small yeah. vegetable and herb garden here in Belgium for a few years. In the future in Portugal, I'll try to garden. With some research, I think the planting and harvesting calendar is different. I imagine it is uh, this much further south for you, Johnny, but it, it does depend not on the general climate, but microclimates. There's a lot of microclimate change as well in Portugal, I think people find as well. Um, bloody caterpillars is what um, Penny thinks is the problem with their uh, purple sprouting. Anyone here? I mean, you've grown purple sprouting, haven't you, Anna, as well? Did you have you got any memories of growing purple sprouting broccoli? I'm sure you've got memories of dealing with caterpillars. What did you do with them at Hannah's? Um, I think I think we did the uh, well. All I can remember is I think we did. I think we um, um, I, I think we did the most humane thing we could possibly do back when we had the um, animals there. I think I think we um, I think we offered them to the chickens or something. I think so. Uh, if you have got chickens, then uh, that is one good uh, uh, cure for um, caterpillars. And um, I, I I do vaguely remember um, from one time doing horticulture. I might need to double check this, but I I do vaguely remember as one type of pest repellent. I think I vaguely remember using I I remember it was a mixture of things, and I'll need to double check on what this is. It might have been something like vinegar and two other things but we did make our own organic um pest uh repellent i do remember and i think i think that was mostly on um veg plants i think it is but it, it was um way back when uh, i was able to do horticulture and um it was it was quite a long time ago now so i might need to research uh the um uh the secret recipe and uh if i get an update on that i can um give you more information but that's one thing i vaguely remember for a bit of Tremendous. pest control yeah i think as, as we do this week by week and we compare notes i mean this this to me is the place to compare notes um the joy of it is being out there doing stuff uh, getting out and growing as it were as, as the name of the group suggests but to have a this is the virtual potting shed isn't it where, where, where if it's we've got virtual rain and we're in the virtual potting shed just having a cup of tea having a brew 
and chatting over our various techniques and reflections on the here he is look he really <laughs> i suppose that's as well as all your tools and your trade lee the, the bug for your brew has to go with you as well right everywhere i go do yeah. you have your own kit for brewing up when you're working in people's garden no i, I, I take a flask everywhere with me i always travel yeah. with a travel mug and a lot of my customers are very generous with coffees so okay. i never i never go shill okay brilliant <laughs> like 30 coffees later in portugal in someone's gardening that's, help, that's helping you keep your uh, energy up it? yeah it keeps you going <laughs> yes okay um would love to hear some ways to avoid beasties says fiona uh, eating everything especially i suspect rodents blackbirds beetles and caterpillars plus of course anything i've not caught in the act yeah like, what else might there be in portugal because there are some more exotic things aren't there they might be nibbling away um, so, yeah, the, the bigger things in the garden, anything to say on that, Lee or John or Anna? Um, oh, you mean, you mean, you mean pest-wise? Yeah, the, the, um, big, one, the bigger ones. Go on, John. I, I think as well, like, for the garden, it's, I think it's not just um, necessarily the growing of things, it's, it's actually the viewing of the garden as well so it might that might be like the whole wildlife thing as well so maybe some of the stuff you grow might be helpful to the wildlife or you might have to might be able to look at some nice wildlife or some stuff going on in the garden as well and that's kind of something that i quite like to do as well as the actual gardening is to look out of the window and see the birds and things like that but obviously not that's probably not for everyone but that's something that i quite like and i quite like as well um the keeping fit part of it that hell i find that's quite cool to be able to do gardening and keep fit as well which is quite a good thing <laughs> yeah i, I think really? that's what i'd say personally no it's a really good point john and you know being able to, to watch the wildlife um, I, I'd love to hear from people who, or, or even see pictures in the group of, of the wildlife that does come to um, to the garden. That's obviously going to be different uh, wherever you are in the world, if it's England or if it's Portugal. What I do notice in Portugal is the whole business of um, putting, having bird tables and feeding wild birds isn't as much of a thing here. Have you noticed that, Lee? Is, is, that, is, that, is that a curiosity yes. for you? I was, I was going to say, um, if you look back on my Facebook page, it's full of pictures of robins. Yeah, um, and back in the UK, every time you get a spade out, there's a robin next to you. Yes, they don't come so close. They, 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 they hang around, they watch you, but they, they won't approach you. So I've been trying to find some wild bird feed, some bugs yeah. or something to feed. I can't find anything. I've looked everywhere, uh, trying to find mealy bugs for me robins. It's it bothers me because it's part of the it's part of the job. It's part of what I enjoy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is, that is a, we had a robin fly into the house the other day and, and we let him out, obviously. But that is a really beautiful thing, isn't it? The, 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 the camaraderie between gardener and robin. And there is something yes. about in, in England getting a, getting a spade out and starting digging the ground. And robins, you know, territorial robins come really close to you and, and you know, are known to sit on the on the spade handle as well, aren't they? If, if you move away a bit. If you were if you work in the same area regularly. And the robin gets because they are very territorial. The, the robin gets used to you. They'll, they'll come and sit on your spade as you're digging. Yeah, amazing. Uh, I've had it on several. I've had it on several places I've worked where, where they'll approach. They, they recognise you. They wait. They wait. See you coming. They approach you straight away. <laughs> oh, brilliant! There's the guy from Blackpool with his flask. He'll sit down in a minute, and then I'll nick his spade. I mean, are they actually? Yeah. Is it semi-aggressive? Are they are they defending their territory and oh. showing you their boss? Oh. Is that what it's about? They are, they are killers. Yeah, wow. there was a, a great, a great, a great documentary on BBC, well, several years ago called "Who Killed Cock Robin," and they followed um, a territory in a, a, a monastery, and there were several breeding pairs. And they followed them through the season, and over the winter, these pairs were disappearing. Using cameras and trail cameras that were new at the time. They discovered it was robins killing each other. What? They they will fight to the death. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. When the weather gets nice, they fight to the death. Sc yeah. Scary, scary stuff. Um, I've, I've, Every, everybody likes a robin until it, it kills you, till it kills its next door neighbor. Yes. Yeah. 
They don't show you that Fantastic. on the Christmas cards, do they? It's just it's a picture of a robin in the snow. Um, I have a pair of robins who come very close every morning. So are they? They're a pair of pals, rather than or a gang, rather than uh, obviously at war with each other, or or they're a pair as in a male and female. Um, and uh, well, or not? Sorry, go on. I've I've just noticed the one in in our in our garden that I see regular. They've just just paired up this week. They've just it's been an individual bird for the last several weeks. The last couple of visits, there's now a pair, and they're yeah. they're protecting their own territory. So I presume they're they're paired up for the season now. Oh, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um. So so yeah, Fiona Fiona's got a, a couple of robins there as well. Uh, also blue tits nesting eight feet away from her morning tea step. What a wonderful oh, ritual that yes. sounds like. A cup of tea in the morning and eight feet away, a couple of blue tits um, nesting as well. Marvellous. Uh, Gary, too. Look, the, 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 the people love the robins. I have a very friendly, and the robins love us. I have a very friendly robin that joins me without fail. This one is cheeky and comes in as I'm turning the soil and pinches whatever turns up. <laughs> Just looks at me when I stop. How beautiful. <laughs> and yeah, and Fiona is a man and female. Um, so with robins then so so those of us who don't have them as such regular visitors are they both red-breasted the the, the, the male and the yes. female robin? Yeah. okay yeah. all right so that's it, how you know it, yeah it, well is it is they go later on in the year the female will lose the redness she'll go a bit oh. darker because when she's nesting uh and the i think i, I believe the youngs are quite um uh, speckled rather than a, a red breast so yeah. it'll still be it'll be a brown bird with a, a really spe spe speckled chest Oh, okay, so, all right. We've got variations in stages. Yeah. yeah, good to know. Good to know. Um, wrens are very toriel too, says Gary, and will take on many things a lot bigger than themselves. Uh, might be little bird syndrome. Um, and, uh, our robin, our, our robin popped down while Paul was stacking wood today uh, uh, to pick up a robin right by his foot. Um, wow. Okay. Um, so yes, lots of lovely stories of, of, of robins getting very close to human beings. That time-honoured um, tradition, I, I guess it is really. Uh, the female is red, is less red, uh, less red, and much more of a brown breast. Says uh, Fiona. All good to know. Thank you so yeah. much. She also says you can get big bits of cardboard um, from. Oh, maybe I've missed something here, but you can get big bits of cardboard from most supermarkets and china shops. My issue is lack of car. Okay, uh, we'll get back to that. Oh, yeah, that's that's from a, a comment from Jani. I, I follow no dig garden permaculture with paper on the ground. It works here uh, for my little garden. Uh, how can you have the same result if you want to go bigger? Not enough cardboard. Okay, so that was the answer to that. Um, uh, you can get cardboard from the supermarkets um, and Ikea. When you get here and, you, and if you buy your furniture from Ikea, save all your cardboard from Ikea and you can use that in the garden. But there is plenty of cardboard, actually, Jani. Uh, the supermarkets that you can help yourself to uh, for sure. Anna, you, we're going back to pests a bit here. Um, if you grow pea shoots, watch out for mice. Tell us about pea shoots, Anna, because you were uh, um, growing a major crop of pea shoots at Anna's, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, th I think I was involved in the growing process of those, but I think half the time we didn't quite catch when they were getting munched by mice. But uh, I, I just remember that was one of the things that they do tend to... Um, uh, go for so you'll probably need to um, keep those well out of the way and um, yeah that's just one little thing that, uh, that I did remember about those and um, yes and I'm, I'm trying to remember sort of other pests that I've um, dealt with as well I know I've seen that things like little red spider mites which can be a bit of a, uh, a nuisance on some plants and um, yeah, aphids, um, vine weevil. Um, yes, have, have, can't say I've had much uh, experience with mice apart from in my bedroom. Apart from in my bedroom currently, but um, uh, but garden wise, <laughs> garden wise, <laughs> um, not like I remember. Um, but uh, yes, pests can. Um, yeah, well, pests can sort of do, sort of be a bit of a a pain at the best of times. But um, but you, you, I do remember you can. Uh, you can look into um, companion plants. I need to do a bit of research on this as well, but um, some shout. plants can actually help uh, deter pests if you want to um, uh, save a um, particular plant. If you put uh, other plants around it, it's usually the scent that um, puts off the um, uh, the pest and uh, you'll have more chance of saving the uh, 
the plants that you want instead of them getting um, pested, <laughs> really. That's uh, another I can give oh, for you. I, I will be doing my research, but um, that's one another tip I remember for you. I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to start flowing freely all your expertise from from the Hannah's garden, uh, Anna, over the next uh, few weeks. And as we really get into it, as the, you know, as the season's hot, hot up, literally. Uh, last year, so we we'll move on to food, and of course, pea shoots are really quick source of food, um, which um, you were growing on an industrial scale, I think, at Hannah's. Um, and it was basically literally, you know, putting the peas, peas, the peas, the dried peas in crates, uh, and then dousing them in water. A um, couple of times a day, and then within a very short space of time, you've obviously got the shoots coming out as though you are going to go and grow them as full on peas. But people are eating them just as, as the shoot stage, as a highly nutritious uh, topping for salads or whatever, or bung them in, you know, on the top of a soup or whatever. Uh, and a, a, it was quite a trendy bit of food at the time. So we, we'll go to food now um, and, and think about what we want to grow and what's nice from the garden. <clears throat> Last year, Gary says he, he grew a butternut squash. Uh, and, or grew butternut squash, and they were fantastic and huge. Uh, they make great soup, nice vegetable with potato and a lovely curry ingredient. I'm not a massive fan, I've said, butternut squash. Um, do you like squash, Anna, John, Lee, and what is it you want to grow this coming season? Uh, that's another question from Gary. What do Anna and John fancy growing this year? So what do you think of squash first, and then what do you want to um, grow this year? I, I like squash quite a lot. Um, and what do I think of growing this year? Ooh, that's a difficult one. Um, one thing we quite like doing is, well, two things, is strawberries and um, and tomatoes. And I'm pretty sure we've grown courgettes in the past as well, so maybe we'll do that again. Um, but, yeah, just just maybe a few vegetables. But the, um, not not too sure about flowers and plants and things, although technically vegetables are plants because you have to have the plant to have the vegetable. But uh, anyway, um, it's like my work once. They had they separated jeans and trousers on the till for the button you press for what it was. It's like, well, jeans are trousers, but <laughs> I'm, I'm diverting off massively now. So um, <laughs> anyway, Anna, so I don't know what you're, you're planning to... Um, planning to grow this year um i'm sort of thinking i i i i keep thinking about um herbs quite a lot and um it just reminded me of another thing as well um if if you are a fan of mint uh whatever you do do make sure it is a, it is in a um container i only remember this i haven't experienced this but um from what i remember being told mint can be, be absolutely rampant and um uh it can pretty much take over a whole flower bed so do make sure it's um it's uh, confined to one area uh if you want to grow mint but um yeah I, I do quite like um herbs and i'm just trying to think of um other ones i like i think i like most veg really so um i i, I won't be planting um sprouts anytime soon i can tell you that much but um <laughs> but, uh, um but um, yeah, I think I think that's why I was most um, veg. I, I did a while ago, possibly last year or so, had a go at planting um, peas up uh, the fence um, by the patio that we've got, and uh, and or I, I think it was either peas or beans. Um, but uh, but they they did uh, re really well. I think um, I'm not sure how long they last, roughly. Um, before they've sort of finished, I think it's usually a sign of just sort of looking when the, for when the leaves are going over. But um, <coughs> peas are good as long as you've got something for them to uh, to climb to climb up because they do need a bit of um, support with the the growing stage. But um, yeah, being a sort of um, like with most most veg, I think I'm just happy to give anything a go really. And um, I have got a a veg bed which I did. Uh, which is actually ready to plant in, but with everything lately, it hasn't actually had anything planted in as at the moment. So uh, it might get my thinking cap on. Brilliant, excellent stuff. Um, and uh, Lee, what about you? What what do you favour for growing? I mean, it's obviously better to grow things you enjoy, right, rather than getting a glut of things you're not going to eat. If if I'm giving advice to anybody about growing veg, I always say look on your shopping list. Yes, your top five veg shopping list. That's what you should be looking at growing. Oh, good um, shout. It, it's, it's the thing you buy the most often. That's what you should be trying to produce. Yeah. Each so for a lot, 
A lot of people are going to be putting potatoes on there, aren't they? And, and I, I'm really well, looking forward to people's potato growing techniques. Go on, Lee. Potatoes are so simple, so easy to grow. It's great for growing with the kids. You grow them in buckets, in tubs. It, it makes sense to do potatoes at every opportunity. Everybody okay. should be growing their own. So, so easy, so easy. Uh, That's in interesting. You say that. I, I don't have that down as an easy thing. So, will you will you take us through that at some point? Oh yeah. Well, I'll take you through it now. I uh, I don't buy seed potatoes from the store. I, as everybody does, you have a few spuds in the bottom of the cupboard that have started to shoot. Yeah. I put them aside, and that's what I use as my base seed potato. Um, last year we grew them in the ground here. Um, but this year I'll be doing it in large tubs. So the larger tub you can find, the better. A few inches of soil in the bottom. Add your spuds. And as you see, the shoots are coming through. Pick off the bottom couple of leaves, put more soil into you, gradually building up. Okay. Um, the, when you get to the top or your maximum soil allowance for the tub, let the plant grow naturally. It will develop a, a flower on the top. You wait for the flower to die. When the plant starts to look weak, Tip out your tub, and that's your potatoes. It's Boom! So yes, all right, fantastic. I might have to, to, to extract that little guide to growing potatoes out of the show tonight and put that up separately. I'm going to do that, absolutely going to do that. Yes, um, the, the, the problem is if you grow potatoes directly in the ground in a, in a large bed, you never find every one. <laughs> and then the following year, you always get a potato. <laughs> that shoots up in the middle of your onions or in the middle of your carrot roll, you have a potato popping up. Okay. So, that's the way to go. Oh, brilliant. Thanks for that, Lee. Uh, great value. I, if you don't have a lot of space, you can always grow some micro greens. It's true. Mrs. Emma's got some uh, uh, this beautiful new jar that you put, um, you know, sprouted seeds in. Uh, and, and there are so many on the market, but this one is good. Um, it is a, like a, a normal sort of jar, but the screw top is a plastic thing with a mesh in it. Um, so you can, and that's not a Sean Connery sort of mesh. It is an actual uh, a, a plastic mesh on the top. You pour your water in, you give it a shake, and then you stand it up. You, you drain it off in the sink, and then you stand this thing upside down, and the moist seeds will 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 um, sprout. And you've got you you've got instant. Well, not. As instant as food gets, you've got instant. Within a couple of days, you've got a topping for salad, something you can chuck on your jacket, spuds, in your soups, do whatever. Very nutritious as well. And Gary is the psychic gardener. He knew John would say strawberries for some reason. Spooky. Um, okay, Lee, do you have a good source for seed trays and decent soft seed compost? Also pots. I have a fairly big project plan, but struggling to find suppliers who can deliver. Or where I can catch a lift to. Nice one, Fiona. Uh, near Shamushka, um, which I think um, is Portuguese for samosa or tamar. Seed see, see, see trays are extremely expensive here compared to England. Um, extremely expensive. So we try to adapt and use other things. So uh, yogurt pots, perfect. Uh, toilet roll tubes for doing your peas in. Brilliant. To look around the house, Any, anything you're going to throw away, anything you're going to waste, uh, egg trays, they're fantastic. Yeah. There's look if, if you if you look around your waste, there's all sorts you can use. A container is just a container. You use it for a short time, roll your seeds in it, then you can dispose of it. All right, fair play. Um, so you can do a pee in a toilet roll tube, as it were. Yes. No, um, you <laughs> You can you can do you can do several peas in a toilet roll tube if you're that way hey, inclined. Okay, um, and um, you um, you do know some big suppliers presumably, so Fiona can catch up with you on that. It sounds like it's a big project, and she's going to need a lot of toilet roll for that. But uh, I guess um, she can find you on Facebook. Is that right, Lee? Are you happy for people to approach you on, on Facebook? Oh, of course, of course, yeah, yeah. All right, fantastic. Uh, uh, I, I, I personally, I personally been using a local uh, garden centre. And I'm lucky enough to build up a bit of a bond with them, and I've got some of their old broken trays oh, that they nice can one. no longer use. Yeah, and I'm using them in my own garden. So make friends with locals and uh, see what you can. Very good, very good. Because well, yeah. they can't, they yeah. can't sell them, can they? But you, you, you can use them. That's really cool. Um, I've got with... my little, uh, my little greenhouse here. Is where are you? Is that your man cave? 
This is the outdoor kitchen, away, away from the noisy children. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. Well yeah, very nice. We have a little tour of that man cave one week, maybe. Um, still eating potatoes from seeds Paul planted with my grandchildren a few years ago. How lovely. Uh, Gianni, I miss a, a few garden, uh, I will miss a few vegetables such as white asparagus, Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts in Belgium, of course, or cauliflower sprouts. Could you plant them in Portugal, central Portugal border or Spain? They'll all grow here, won't they, uh, Lee? Yeah, they will certainly will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you should really be starting your seedlings next month for those sprouts. You start, you start your seeds next month, get them out early April. Oh, brilliant. Oh, it's so good to have someone who knows when to get the seeds out at the right time. Um, great to know I'm working hard to attract more bees, says Fiona. This is how bees can help with the occasional caterpillar as well. Um, I saw a good idea where someone turned an old fridge on its back and used it as a raised bed. God bless the Portuguese. Absolutely so resourceful here. Um, I have buckets with potatoes working well. Uh, Fiona, yeah, I reuse absolutely all my packaging. Just need way more. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I don't know. This probably was about doing a pee in a toilet roll. Mark, what are you like? Uh, I even you reuse crisp packets and any strongish plastic packets. Amazing, Fiona. Uh, need to get in quick with buying seeds. Last year, they sold out really quickly due to new COVID gardens. Yes, there was a rush, wasn't there? Because a lot yes. of people did, did say to the garden. Yeah. And that, that's what this is all about. So in, in the last few seconds here, um, I would like to invite people to come to the Get Out and Grow um, project on the Happy Homesteaders group, as was on Facebook. Let me share this on the screen for you. This is the... If you if you're like me and you need a little bit of um, uh, I don't know if it's not cajoling but sort of support um, with being a gardener, this might be the way to do it. Okay, if you go to the Get Out and Grow um, with the Happy Homesteaders group, I've put up some some learning units which might help a little bit to organise the information and to take you step by step through this process. Um, and here I'm going to oh. I can't I don't, I don't know why it's gone to this tiny um, size on the screen here. Let me see if I can get it uh, to a bigger size um, so that we can actually see what we're doing here. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, get out and grow. And um, this is something I set up earlier on. And this is a sort of commitment we would like to see from people. Um, and to, to make sure that you've got the commitment and you've got the support as well. And John and Anna helped me with this very quickly before we came on air. But the first question here is, and the first commitment you might want to make in the group, get the support of other people, is are you ready to grow some food? I think it's like, are you ready to rumble? I think most people are. Next question, are you ready to commit to getting some fresh air on, in your garden or on your balcony as much as possible? Very good uh, call from John on a point of order. We don't want to put any undue pressure on people. I said every day, but as much as possible, as John quite rightly pointed out, is good. Um, so are you ready for that? Are you ready to get on into your garden or on your balcony if that's the only space you've got? We're hoping for a yes there. Um, are you ready to be supported and support others in this process, ideally in this get out and grow group? Hopefully that's another yes. Uh, and the final green light for getting uh, organized and getting together in this, in this project, are you ready to document your journey and celebrate your success with this community? Hopefully another yes there. And then you, we'll, we'll move on next week. We will look at health and safety in the garden. So we want to make sure you're safe in the garden. Um, we're looking at people with all kinds of needs and abilities being involved in this. And we want to make sure people are, are safe uh, when they're embarking on this. So next week, we will have a look at safety first, health and safety in the garden, just to make sure everybody's safe uh, once they get, get growing, get cracking. Thank you so much for your attention tonight. Lee, thank you so much for your uh, contributions tonight. It's been fantastic to meet you and for you to be so generous with your time and with your information. No problem. We really enjoyed it. All right, mate. Um, and Gar Gary's saying, love this little interlude to have a cuppa and chat about growing. So, Gary, this is looking like the shape of things to come on a Monday evening. Um, all the better if it's a bit drizzly outside and a bit cold and, and the night's coming in. Although, obviously, in a few months' time, we'll be wanting to be in the garden at six o'clock on a Monday evening. But hopefully, we will gather and regroup on a Monday night, share, support each other, share information, um, you know, Q&A, the, the very sort of thing you've been seeing tonight. Um, and we will answer more questions like, is it worth, if you move from Belgium, to bring certain seeds with you? When we came from UK, that was one of the things we made sure we brought was, was a seed collection. To me, I think that's as precious as gold, silver or Bitcoin. What say you, Lee? I, I have some sent out. I've had some packaged and sent to me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, see, see yeah. yeah. They are they are such yeah. an amazing. I think it's just, the seeds are going to be 
um, a really important thing in the future. I mean, they are already, but I think we're going to understand how important seeds are. I and um, I Anna makes a good comment. With more people getting into growing veg with the COVID and being at home more, I knew I had a feeling the seeds here were going to run out really quickly. Yeah. So I had a few cents in the box. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Anna, uh, uh, you put a comment up earlier on, Anna, uh, out of saving seeds or seed saving or buying seeds, which is recommended. What would you say, Lee? I sa I save all my unused seeds from last year. Yeah. They're all here. They're all still in the, in the same packaging. They yeah. to be reused. And, and are you happy, um, happy, happy to trade as well with, with the seeds you save from your oh, own garden? Yeah, you can trade. You can speak to your neighbours. You can use, if you're growing tomatoes, you can use the seeds out of tomatoes from the supermarket. Yeah. There's always ways around it. You should be yeah. thinking about it now. Super. Now is the time to be looking at the seeds and preparing. All right. Um, hope this is the only time of the year where it's okay to be seedy. Um, hoping to set up a seed bank in time. Is this something the group might like? I'm going to say yes, 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 and yes to that. I think that'll be a lovely thing for us to be posting seeds across the country to each other, uh, Fiona, or even meeting up occasionally if circumstances allow. That's an absolutely wonderful idea, Fiona. Uh, I save my wildflower seeds, but I need to start uh, harvesting veg seeds. It's easy to forget, isn't it? But yeah, of course, the um, the, the the honey nut, is it called honey nut? The, the squash um, that Gary was talking about. So easy to save the seeds from those bad boys and grow them again. I think Anna, you were going to add something there. Um, I, I was just trying. I was trying to remember the, the squash. The only one that came into my head first of all was the butternut squash, but um, yeah. I, I know of a few other squash as well. But uh, yeah, superb. And Fiona, yeah, that intel is absolutely welcome. Seed swapping groups um, on Facebook that gratefully receive that info and probably turn that into one of the learning units so that we've got the info people need and want in the right place and they can find it easily. Um, there is a village in the UK with an old phone box seed swap. That sounds beautifully British, Penny. Absolutely wonderful. What with no seeds coming in from Europe anymore? Only kidding. Um, so um, thank you, everybody, so much for this um, yeah, inaugural session of the air team becoming the fresh air team and launching the Get Out and Grow initiative. Do please encourage other people. The more, the merrier, I think. And I, you know, between you and me, I do honestly think it's one of the most revolutionary things we can do at the moment with with politicians and governments really struggling to, to look after people appropriately, adequately and in great number. There's so much we can do for ourselves as well. And I think growing food and looking after each other on this sort of level, swapping seeds, swapping tips, swapping know how is really important in these times. So I'm really looking forward to this. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, John. Awesome. Nice to meet you all. All right, cheers. Um, I'm going to we'll say goodbye to you, Lee, and we'll welcome you another time. You're welcome anytime. Perfect, and, uh, have a you have a lovely evening in the in the in his man cave there, just outside, avoiding the kids having a brew. Um, Anna and Lee, how do you how do you think uh, Anna and Lee, Anna and John, how do you think it's gone this evening? Uh, I think it's right. I was going to shout, cut the stream, just in case. Cut the stream. Shall I cut the stream? Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Also, what's happening? Yes. Uh, take, uh, sorry, um, a bit of a gardening advice: uh, if you have a stream flowing through your garden, which some people obviously do, <laughs> make sure that it doesn't get blocked by things like your grass chippings or anything like that. If there's any sticks in the way when you're doing your grass cutting, move them out of the way so the grass chippings can flow away so then it doesn't get blocked up and it doesn't flood the garden because that nice might happen tip, if you're sir. really unlucky. Nice tip, sir. Very good indeed. All right, and thanks for all your positive comments, everybody. Take care. Bye for now. See you next week at uh, 6.15. Ciao, ciao.